I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Woo! We, we got talking about something very, very serious and important yesterday. And I don't want to waste time. Let's get right into it. Praise God. But before we go into it, can we make demand for our daily bread? Oh, do this with so much faith in your heart right now. Say with me, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I don't know what you need today. I don't know what part of the world you're listening to me from. And I don't know, hey, what challenges that's going on where you are. But I have this good news for you. Wherever you are, God can reach out to you. And that's what I want you to believe today and release your faith for him. To him, sorry. And receive from the Lord every good thing he's planned for you. And I'll tell you the truth. If, if it will take your neighbor hearing the voice of God and come knocking on your door, say, that, I, I had a dream that you, um, you needed this. Oh, oh, oh. I'm telling you, God can do it. If it takes someone traveling miles to come and meet your need, God can do it. Hey, let me tell you the big, best part. If it will take an angel to physically come knock on your door and give you something, God can do it. He's done it severally. Praise God. Read the scriptures. Elijah was woken up by an angel. He says, eat. The angel brought physical food, not spiritual food. Physical food. He says, eat. He finished eating. So, I'm full. The angel said, hey, hey, sir, eat some more because the journey is far. That was an angel. Praise God. Oh, glory to Jesus. So, hey, believe God today. That need will surely be met. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter how much it is. It doesn't matter how little it is. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Keep your, listen, don't magnify the challenge in your mind. Magnify God in your mind. Praise God. I love this. Glory to God. So yesterday, we began to talk about a covenant that God caught with Abraham to enforce the promise that he made with Abraham. Praise God. So, Hey, we are in Genesis chapter 14. I was sharing with you about the meeting Abraham met with, um, had with Melchizedek. It was a covenant cutting. They, they, they met to cut a covenant. Take note of that. It wasn't a, oh, I would just want to visit you to know how. No, it was a covenant. Now, what do you mean a covenant? You see, a promise is one-sided. A promise is this, one person telling you, hey, I like you, I love you, and I promise to do this for you. That's a promise. But a covenant is stronger than a promise. A covenant is two parties agreeing to something in which each of the parties involved now two or more parties actually each of the parties involved have a role to play for the execution of that covenant you see that now so now it's an agreement but in this agreement each party have have a role to play so now here's god having promised abraham all these things but then he wanted to make it legal. You see that? And most times that's that's how you that's how you get to a covenant. Someone promised you something, say, mm. you know, sometimes um, if someone is even giving you a gift and then they want to write an agreement, maybe someone is transferring his car to you, or someone is transferring his land to you. And some lawyers will tell you this. Don't say, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, some lawyers will tell you, don't say he gave me this as a gift. No. Make it a covenant. Now, when they are advising that way, 
They are trying to help you against any future trouble. So they say, make it a covenant. And in that covenant, it will be stated. Now, that land may be valued at uh, 10 or $1 million. But they'll say, make it a covenant and let it be stated there that you gave 10,000 naira or you gave something. I've had this happen, praise God. Why? Now they are trying to say, look, you didn't take this thing all just like that. You you, you did something. Now, that's to say someone cannot tomorrow rise and undo that thing. It's a covenant. So a covenant have roles that um, each party will have to play to make it a force. Praise God. So, let's all understand that. So Abraham met Melchizedek and Melchizedek brought this bread and wine and he was to stand between God and Abraham. He didn't show up as himself because he, he showed up. He says, blessed be Abraham of the most high God. Let's read it again. Genesis chapter 14. Watch this. Now watch, watch the words of Melchizedek. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High. Abraham, you belong to the Most High. Possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High. I am not going to say that. Now, I, I, I need you to understand this. <laughs> Melchizedek came as a priest. So he's standing in the middle. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be God Most High. Now, why did he put the Most High in Abraham and God? He was Ayanapushia. He was bringing them to the same place. I told you, he stood as a witness. Now, he brought bread and wine, signifying that he brought it from the Most High God. Yep. And he now told Abraham, hey, God wants to cut a covenant with you. And this is the covenant. God is saying, he's going to bless everything. He's taking full responsibility of all you will ever need. So, he gave me this bread and wine to bring to you. Okay. Now, Abraham, you are going to do something because this is a covenant. Okay. You are going to give him a tithe, which is one tenth of everything you have. Now, take note, Melchizedek didn't go to Abraham in his house. Melchizedek met Abraham when he went for this war, defeated them, was on his way with all these spoils. See that now? So Abraham had labored and he's got these spoils. And I believe he, he, was, he has been meditating on what he's going to do with all these goods because they are now his. They were his because they are the spoils of war. He rescued all the human beings and then he got all the goods everything so Melchizedek said you're going to give a tenth of everything yes sir that was the cutting of the covenant now Melchizedek brought bread and wine from God so God gave him provision now Abraham brought what a tenth of everything that he had. 
and there was an exchange. Now, guess what? It didn't stop there. After that, Melchizedek said to Abraham, Now, Abraham, having received from God what God has given, and God having received your tithes from you, there is one more thing you're going to do for us now. Say, what is it? You see all these things that you got from the wall? He said, yes. I don't want you to touch anything from it. Why? You know, you've now entered into covenant with God. And God is not going to share his glory with any being. Okay? So, you are going to return all this thing back to the king of Sodom. Because God doesn't want the king of Sodom to think that he made you rich. But these are the spoils of war. Yes. Don't touch it. Give it back to me. I went to this war. I risked my life. I put my time, my energy, and my servants. Yeah. Yes. My sweat. Yes. Give it back to me. Hmm. Okay, sir. No problem. I'll do it. Abraham, yes, sir. Come here. Lift up your right hand. Say before me. And say before God. I, Abraham, I, Abraham, of the Most High God, the Most High God, pledge, pledge, that I will not take... Ah, even a shoeless from all this. Hold on. Is this necessary? Yes, it is necessary. Because I want you to keep it. Hmm. Okay. I will not take even a shoeless from all these things. From all these things. Amen. Amen. Now simply means so be it. Fine. Then Melchizedek instructed Abraham what to do with the 10%, the one-tenth that he received from him. He told him, look, we, we are going to make a feast and we're going to eat from this. So every one of Abraham's summer. Now, it was not a two-minute meeting. It was a long meeting they had. They ate together. And when they finished eating together, Melchizedek instructed him from God this is, our, what, this is what to do with this. This is what to do with this. And this is what to do with this. Okay, sir. Now you can go. So Abraham left that place. And then he met the king of Sodom. And the king of Sodom quickly said, Hey! Wow! Thank God. Thank you. You've helped us. You know what? I don't even know why you brought all these things. They are the spoils of war. Just give us our wives and children. You know, Abraham, I know you, you're an honorable man. But let's do what is right, you know. I, 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 we, we've lost all these things already. So we count them as loss. So we are grateful that we have our wives and our children back. So that's sufficient for us. Just give them to us and you can have all the good. Abraham said, no, 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 no. Abraham, don't say that. It's not a sin. It's not wrong. You, you know, Abraham was so faithful to God that you really, really, really have to convince him to do otherwise. Praise God. Yeah, so now the king was, no, Abraham, I know you. You are a simple man. You don't like trouble. You don't like any. But these things are actually yours. To us, they are all gone. That's when Abraham said, hey, I have sworn before. I've lifted up my hands. That's what he said. He said it here. I'm not making this up, praise God. 22 verse 22. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised up my hand to the Lord. So Abraham knew he wasn't raising up his hand to Melchizedek. He was raising up his hand to the Lord. Melchizedek was just a witness. 
Praise God. I have raised up my hand to the Lord God Most High. Now, that's, you see that, that God Most High is to tell you where this event took place. It took place in the confines of that meeting they had. You remember when we read this and I was saying, why the Most High, Most High labeling? <laughs> you understand? So, Abraham knew what he was saying also. I have lifted up my hand to the Lord Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth. Now, Melchizedek had explained to Abraham the extent to which God was going to bless him and take care of him. God had told him, look, I am the possessor of heaven. That's why he introduced himself like that way. The possessor of heaven and earth. Do you know what that means? It means wherever you go to on this earth, I can meet you there. I possess everything. And listen, I am going to give you halalugi <laughs> gameneya. Hey, <laughs> the possessor of heaven. So he said, I have lifted up my hand to the Lord Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a tread of a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, glory. <laughs> so, why did why was this so important and and Melchizedek saying don't take anything I told you earlier God wanted to take the full glory over Abraham's life and this was not just to Abraham, this was also to his seed. Now I want you to notice something about Abraham. The moment he was taught, he responded. He didn't waste time. He did it immediately. The moment he was taught about tithing, he said, yes, sir, I'll do it. And then he quickly arranged the tithe and gave to Melchizedek. And as he received from him the bread and the wine. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, keep this in mind because there's, there, there's where this is going to. But let's finish the covenants first. So take note of this. This, what we call titan, is not just something God said, bring your tithe. No, it was a covenant two people went into. God and Abraham. And the witness of that covenant was the man Melchizedek. Praise God. He stood as a witness, as a high priest. He came as a high priest of God. Now you know the job of the high priest is to intercede for us. And that's why he came in that form. And so he stood there as the witness. So God and Abraham caught a covenant that God would take care of Abraham. And Abraham will give God a tent of everything. Praise God. Our time is up for today. We're going to continue tomorrow looking to the second covenant that they got into. God bless you. Have a fruitful day today. Bye.